complex numbers and complex functions are used in many different fields in engineering. For example, in Electrotech, you use it in AC theory. In this video, we're going to have a look at the very basic definition of what a complex number is. In order to do this, we're going to go back to a problem you would have seen at school. So we're going to look at a quadratic equation and we're going to look at x squared plus 2x plus 5 equals to 0. Now usually when you have a quadratic equation like this, and that means that you've got an equation that has the variable to your power 2. If you were to solve for this equation, find the value of x, usually you would try to get two brackets equals to 0, x, x, and put your factors in here so that you can get x equals to a value or x equals to some other value. The problem that you have here though is that 5 cannot factorize in such a way that you'll get a 2 in the middle. So this is not going to work. So we'll have to find a different way of finding your factors. The other method you can use is to look at the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula says that it will be your root equals minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, everything over 2a. Right? And then the values for b, a, and c would be the numerical coefficients of these terms here. So b is going to be 2, a will be 1, and c is going to be 5. If we substitute the value in now, we're going to get minus 2 plus minus square root of, and we've got b squared, that's going to be 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. Right, and all of that is going to be over 2 times 1. Okay, now if we simplify this, you'll get minus 2 plus minus the square root of minus 16 over 2. This is an answer. If you were in school, they would have told you that this does not exist because of the square root of minus 16. The right, and that at school the teachers told you does not exist. This is however not true. The only reason you couldn't find the value for the square root of minus 16 was because you were working in the real number system. And within the real number system, you do not get the square root of minus 16. So what we're going to do is we are going to expand the number system that we're working with to include what we call imaginary numbers. Now, imaginary numbers doesn't mean that they don't exist. It's just an unfortunate name that um, one of the mathematicians in the past gave it. Now, if I look at the square root of minus 16, let's look at it on its own. Square root of minus 16, that can be broken up into minus 1 multiplied by 16. According to your exponential rules and your third laws, you can write this as that. Okay, which is the same as saying 4 times the square root of minus 1. Now, this square root of minus 1, we are going to define as the value of j. Right? Which means that this value is going to be equal to 4j. Please note that in all your mathematics textbooks, mathematics websites, Khan Academy, um, any other videos that you may see where the focus is mathematics, you'll find that the imaginary number is called i. But in our case, because i has already been assigned to current, we have to use j. So all of engineering will use the value j. So if you go back to your example now, 
you will see that your x is going to be equal to minus 2 over 2 plus minus 4j over 2, which is going to be minus 1 plus minus 2j. And this is a complex number. And a complex number is made up of what we call the real part and the imaginary part. In terms of notation, we would write this as the real part of x is minus 1 and the imaginary part of x is 2. Let's have a look at another example. And in this example, we're going to look at a quadratic equation where your variable is z. And we're going to look at z squared. 3z plus 3 equals to 0. And we want to find the roots of this equation. Now, you can already tell that you cannot do what we call prime factorize. And prime factorize just means what we mentioned earlier, is try to find two brackets that, so that when you multiply them out, you get this equ quadratic equation here. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use the quadratic formula again. So in this case, we'll have z equals minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So minus b is going to be 3. So that is going to be 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3 and everything over 2 times 1. And that'll be equal to minus 3 plus minus the square root of minus 3 over 2. So here again, you've got the square root of minus 3. And as I said before, when you were only working within the real number system, there would be no solution for that square root of minus 3. But now, because we've defined j, the imaginary number, as being the square root of minus 1, that can be changed into plus minus minus 1 times square root of 3 over 2, which would be equal to plus minus square root of 3 over 2, times j. So in this case, your solution is going to be z equals minus 3 over 2 plus minus the square root of 3 over 2 times j. And the real part of z is minus 3 over 2, and the imaginary part of z is going to be square root of 3 over 2. Now, the general form for the complex number. In general, we call the complex number z, and your real part is allocated a value of a, and the imaginary part is b times j. You'll see in some textbooks they also write it as x plus y j. This form of the complex number is what we call rectangular form. Rectangular form. In some books, you will see they also call it the complex Cartesian form. But for our purposes, we're going to call it rectangular form. Now you can go and practice. Um, there is a tutorial question which you can complete to see whether or not you understand the section of work.